Getting a tech job is just gonna get worse. This experience that a person had with a big tech company's hiring process made me realize that companies are just gonna start doing this more and more. And this is a practice that I believe will not only first decrease the quality of developers, but will also make people leave this industry altogether. Now, I don't wanna exaggerate because I still believe that the tech industry is a great path to success, but this type of behavior, you know, from big companies and recruiters alike, is just gonna make more people say, look, I'm good, I'm out. So stick around because we're gonna talk about this bad practice that's starting to get more popular. But before that, make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe because this is gonna help get this algorithm going and maybe others will see this video as well. The tech market is oversaturated with junior developers and with people that don't have enough knowledge, right? But they actually want to get in. And if you pair this with so many layoffs and companies struggling to do business in this high interest rate environment, we can see that the supply of, let's say, broadly speaking, right, engineers far exceeds the demand. And therefore, we get both lower offers and a lower number of roles. And in terms of proposed salary, what you used to get as a senior engineer, now you have to be either lead or an architect. And I'm constantly receiving architect roles that pay as much as a senior back in 2021. And on top of that, companies also became peakier. They are making people jump through multiple hoops in order to just continue interviewing. Now you might be thinking that it's a tough market already, but you would be wrong because it will get worse. A couple of days ago I saw this post that now looks like it was deleted for some unknown reason, but I still managed to get a screenshot because I wanted to make this video as soon as I read it. Now the simple fact that it's been deleted by the moderators actually raises some questions, but I still believe that this is the direction in which things are actually heading towards, and I think it's still important to see what this person was saying. He or she had 5 years of experience as a software engineer, and from what I inferred he was from India. Many of my audience are from India, so please let me know down in the comments if this is happening there at the moment, okay? So a recruiter actually reached out to him for a job and the process was about one screening round and then four more technical interviews. Now apparently the recruiter booked his screening round in four weeks from them because he needed some time to practice. Now this is kind of odd in my opinion because the screening round should be scheduled as soon as possible so that you can find out quickly if the candidate has the skills for that specific job. It makes no actual sense you know, to give them four weeks for a screening process unless you really, really want them to do a good job and be prepared and you really believe at the same time that that candidate might not be up to standard. So you give them a little bit of time so that they can get up and ready. So that means the recruiter was invested in that candidate to succeed. The screening is a screening, so you're trying to get a broad understanding if the candidate is actually worth pursuing. But when you give them four weeks, that means two things, okay? You want them to succeed, and you also believe that they might not be prepared for that role. And that's bias right here, unless you actually do this with all candidates and you spend time with all of them, which is hard to do because it would just grind the hiring process to a halt if you interview so many people. But this is where it's actually getting interesting. Apparently the recruiter actually asked for his lead code profile and then started monitoring his or her preparation. And this is the first time I hear about this and I'm not sure if this is becoming more standard because this is the weird bit. I mean, somebody monitoring you when you're actually grinding lead code. I mean, it just makes it feel so mechanic. Like you just need to memorize ways to solve problems and then you just gotta pass the interview. So the recruiter is actually trying to get people to pass interviews with a clear, well-defined formula. We actually just grind lead code and then you compete with others that solve the same predefined problems. Also apparently the recruiter wanted to dictate how many medium and how many hard lead code questions the candidate should do each day. And on top of that, also they wanted him to do a mock interview to get a sense of whether the candidate is ready. I mean, let's unpack this for a bit. First, you know, somebody monitoring your lead code profile to see how much you practice. It just feels unnatural because software engineering should be something that you enjoy doing. I don't really understand how we got to this point in which memorizing how to solve lead code problems is a demand for a creative space like programming. It just looks like software engineering is getting more narrow and more specific and the desire is to turn people into simple code execution machines that just do what they're told. I find that grinding lead code is actually programming people into believing that programming is just about execution. And so far it works because apparently people accept this type of treatment to compete with others on the same benchmarks in a very organized way just who can grind for longer. 
And second, right, some random person dictating how many of these questions you actually need to do per day. And then they just don't pay, right? They just dangle a carrot, you know, with a job opportunity. And for some reason, you just need to break your back for that and just prove to them that you are worthy. This is a weird shift from years ago when being a programmer meant that you were actually creative, you were smart, you had agency, and you were respected. Now, for some reason, software engineers are just being told what to work, how much to work, and not even for a salary only for an opportunity. Imagine just doing this for three or four times a week, you know, where you just need to do this every week until you try passing, I don't know, 10, 20 interviews. This is just a full-time job interviewing. And third, you know, maybe 10 years ago, testing data structures and algorithms was actually good for finding engineers who were in the top percentile for that market. And that was because those people invested actual time, you know, in finding those solutions by themselves to solve those problems. They were no like how to crack interview books or videos or websites. You just had to do the hard work by yourself and only the people that were really passionate about doing the work did that work. Now you just memorize things and you just repeat paths to solving these problems. And the interview process is just so gamified that you just need to grind lead code. I mean, just the word grind actually annoys me. If you grind on something, right? Like you're not really enjoying and taking time to discover and be creative. I remember seeing a YouTube video titled how to force yourself to learn how to code force yourself. Understand that it was clickbait, but the whole idea to force yourself to do something, it means that there's no passion for it. And I used to code for 11 hours straight for a period when I was actually building a trading library. I, I used to be like dog tired at the end of the day and my eyesight was blurry. I had a headache, but I enjoyed it so much that I couldn't wait to get started in the morning. And if you force yourself to do something, that means you don't really want to do it. You're just executing until you get it through your thick skull. And listen, I get that you need to practice to get good at something, but lead code. In this day and age, right, it's completely useless to be a good software engineer. In this day and age, in order to be a good engineer, you need to leverage multiple skills and technologies in order to solve real world problems. It's faster than ever to build software products and you need to go wide and you need to actually build more and leverage these AI tools for the groundwork. Because if you dig your head in the sand, you know, learning to solve problems that are already solved, then you're not really moving forward. You just become an insecure cog that just executes. And then you just grind away hoping for that carrot. And that's understandable from a company's point of view because they just need cheap labor that does what you tell them to. So the easier it is for them to streamline the hiring and the firing process and just get people to be completely replaceable, the quicker they do this, right? The more money they can save as well. And I think this practice of trying to help people to pass coding interviews in lower cost of living countries, I think this is going to get more popular because you train those people to just become execution cogs. So Western companies can get a more standardized way in which programming is done so that you can easily replace any programmer in higher cost of living countries. So if you're a programmer in these countries, I mean, why would you even compete with smart people from all over the world in an exercise that is so narrow like, like lead code? Now, there's a lot of outsourcing going on and we see how companies lay off thousands of people and then they just go outsource at the rate of four to one and they still save money. So there will be a push to train more people in lower cost of living countries to serve that demand. Because in those countries, there will be need for more labor and for more cheap labor. So if you're in India, for example, right, there will be more jobs, but the competition will be crazy. So I'm not sure how software engineering got here, but I don't see how you can compete internationally as a software engineer living in a higher cost of living country. I believe that the future of engineering in Western countries will be for more entrepreneurish people that branch out to build solutions for real world problems and that eventually end up competing on narrow niches, but with big tech companies. Not between ourselves and competing with all other countries for salaries that are just going down. And to do that, yes, okay, you're going to need to use some tools that the big tech companies offer, but you can make a good living by doing this. That's why I believe cloud solutions are important because you can leverage so much. And that's why I created getthatbadge.com because it's more than just getting certified in order to get a job. It's about learning faster about all the cloud offerings based on your individual specialization, be it AI, DevOps, data engineering. You can learn these tools for your specialization and you can do that as fast as possible and then you can build that confidence that you can do it and then you can just cracking at it. Because passing a cloud certification exam is not just about getting that badge and getting a job. 
it's a confidence and a knowledge booster that will help you in your career. So you can use getthatbadge.com to pass those exams and that way you can also support this channel and help me create more videos. I think modern day software engineering looks a lot more different than when big tech companies actually started these whiteboard tests and now they're just doing this grinding lead code trend. I think it's weird that we're measuring competency today with practices that don't resemble in any way how today's development is done. But this is huge nowadays as more and more people are trying to compete in order to get these jobs by just like grinding lead code and then you can just copy projects and then you can just add them to your portfolio and literally do anything, right? Literally anything except building software products that solve real world problems with an actual goal that is bigger than just getting a job. And another take on why this might be happening is that recruiters seem to have an incentive to convert potential candidates or have them perform good in the interview. So depending on an inclusiveness criteria that a company wants, then the recruiter is incentivized to go and find those people that fit that criteria. And then you need to make those people perform well in the interview in order to get that job. I think recruiters helping you is great and we all want equal opportunities and that's great. But the moment that you help only a subset of the candidate pool, then the fairness criteria is thrown out the window. So grinding and memorizing solutions and then performing well in the interview based on narrow criteria. I think this is going to work to get a lot more people in the workforce and you're going to get a more diversified workforce, but a workforce that is just good at narrow tasks, which is the exact opposite of what we should be doing because AI is good at exactly that. And I don't know why you'd want to compete in this space where you compete on narrow tasks that an AI could do and also for lower salaries. Now, let's take the company side as well, because in all honesty, right, the number of bad candidates has increased a lot and it's harder than ever to churn out candidates from the, the CV stage and also from the screening stage, because nowadays everybody knows how to write good CVs and they also know what to say because you can easily prepare for any type of job, right? For any job title with the use of AI tools like ChatGPT. So you can get people that have no deep knowledge, you know, to pass through these filters. So companies need to do something to make sure that the candidates are at least good at something and lead code became popular. So what they're doing now, they're just using these lead code tests in order to make sure that those people are good at at least one thing. But I don't really think that this is good in the long run. But what do you think? Did you have to do any of this when you applied for a job? I'm really interested to know because I want to know if this is becoming a standard practice. Let me know down in the comments what you think, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.